Hi everyone, I'm Ken, and in this video I wanted to do a brief overview of the Coronado PST, or uh, Personal Solar Telescope. It comes in a couple of different flavors, and I'll cover both the basic PST and the 0.5 PST and tell you the differences. Uh, so this is it here, this is the, 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 the base uh, PST. It's a 40 millimeter lens up front. Uh, inside is a 30mm uh, Edelon, which is the filter that allows the specific wavelength of hydrogen alpha light to pass through to the eyepiece. Uh, and hydrogen alpha light is where many of the very interesting features on the sun uh, radiate best at. So solar flares, prominence, um, uh, surface granulation, filaments. There's all, there's all sorts of stuff to, to, uh, to see on the sun when you have a hydrogen alpha uh, telescope. Um, in many cases, hydrogen alpha... Uh, filters or telescopes are very expensive because it's a very difficult wavelength to isolate. Well, the PST is a is quite an affordable way to do it. Um, and let me tell you some of the uh, the features of, of the PST here. All right, so first off, the PST is a one angstrom bandpass solar telescope. And what does a one angstrom bandpass mean? Um, on the hydrogen alpha line, uh, when you're talking about a solar filter or a, a hydrogen alpha uh, solar telescope, the bandpass gives you the contrast on the surface features. So with this, it's one angstrom bandpass, which is a very narrow width of light right around that hydrogen alpha line, deep in the middle of the red spectrum. That's sort of why uh, uh, solar telescopes have that signature red view, is because it's passing just that one wavelength. So the, the width of that wavelength that comes through the telescope uh, with the basic PST is one angstrom. That is perfect for seeing solar prominences and flares coming off the edge of the sun, sort of silhouetted against the black background of space. Um, you can see the uh, there's different shapes to prominences depending on which ones you're looking at or, or how they're erupting. Uh, they look like little hedgerows or sometimes they look like big arcs coming off the sun. And one angstrom is absolutely perfect for giving a very bright image of that type of feature. Now surface features are a little bit lower contrast because they're a, a, a a prominence on the surface of the sun, uh, not silhouetted on the edge, is called a filament. And it looks a little darker than the background um, uh, solar surface, but the, by definition, the contrast is a little bit lower. So you'll want narrower bandpass in order to see those features even better. You can definitely do it with the PST. If you look carefully, you can see the surface granulation. You can see some uh, filaments, uh, depending on the activity of the sun at any given day. Uh, but to get it even higher contrast, you can go for the 0.5 PST. And what that is, is basically a combination of the PST and this external 40 millimeter Edelon. It just threads onto the end here. Let's see if we can do that with one hand. So this is basically the 0.5 PST. Now, uh, because of the double stacking of an external Edelon and the internal Edelon, you get a 0 0.5 angstrom bandpass. Remember, down from one angstrom. And that significantly boosts the contrast. So service features pop out even better uh, with, with this version. Now, the beauty of the PST is you can do it both ways. If, uh, if the, uh, the 0.5 angstrom uh, PST is not in your budget to start out with, get the base PST, and then you can add on this 40 millimeter Edelon later, um, or just get the 0.5 to begin with, and then you have the best of both worlds. You can take it on, uh, take it off, put it back on, depending on what you want to look at. Um, so let's talk about the features itself. Um, first of all, if it's just the PST, I'll ignore this part for a second. Just the PST focuses down here on the bottom. Uh, adjust that for your eyesight, for different eyepieces that you put in, for a camera perhaps if you attach it. Um, and then right here is a tuning filter or a tuning mechanism for the filter. This actually adjusts the spacing of the internal Edelon in order to precisely um, pass the specific hydrogen alpha wavelength. Now you might say, why do you need to have it tuned? Why not just set it right to the specific wavelength? Well, environmental feature, uh, environmental factors can affect that. The, the pressure, if you're at high altitude versus low, it's gonna slightly shift uh, the wavelength that's being passed. Uh, temperature to a less extent. If you're looking at a uh, prominence on the edge and it's coming towards you, meaning it's rotating towards you, well, that's going to shift, that's going to blue shift the wavelength slightly up uh, towards the blue end of the spectrum. And then on the other side, as it's going away from you, it's going to red shift. So that can alter the wavelength. So being able to tune it here really helps uh, get the best contrast 
uh, for the feature that you're looking at. Uh, it comes up to an inch and a quarter eyepiece. Comes with a 18 millimeter C-Max eyepiece. You can attach in a, a inch and a quarter camera instead, or get an adapter for a um, uh, uh, an Astro camera, DSLR, or other dedicated uh, camera. So there's there's many ways you can view through this thing, either visually or with a camera sensor. Now, if you have the 0 0.5 PST, you've got extra tuning ability up front. Uh, there's a another uh, Ridgeview tuner here, which adjusts the Edelon in the front. So that in combination with the back tuner, you can really precisely tune in the, the wavelength of the feature you're looking at. And there's also the T-Max tuner here, which is a very subtle tilt, which adjusts the tilt to get rid of any unwanted reflections. Remember when when bright solar light is coming through this, there's, there could be some reflection. So that minimizes it. And it also provides the brightest image of the, of the disc itself. So uh, between the two rich views and the T-Max, you get the best contrast on the feature that you're looking at. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention here, there's a Sol uh, rangefinder, a little viewfinder built in to help you uh, find the sun. If you look down here, I don't know if you can see it on the bottom, there's a little input port. And the sun, the, the disk of the sun's image uh, comes through there, and then you'll see it projected onto this little uh, iced over uh, glass plate. You don't have to look through it, you just look at the plate, and you'll see a little disk of the sun. And that just helps uh, aim the telescope, because you don't want to be looking back here and going to look up at the sun and blind yourself. So a very easy way to find the sun um, uh, when you're uh, wanting to use it for looking at hydrogen alpha features on the disk. On the bottom, uh, two quarter 20 uh, threaded sockets. That's for any photo tripod. This thing weighs very little. So any standard photo tripod uh, would work fine. Um, it's got two si uh, front to back. So there's actually even a Coronado uh, dovetail rail that uses a Vixen style dovetail rail that you can bolt on so you can stick this onto some equatorial mount that uses the Vixen uh, cradle. All right, I think that is all of the features I wanted to talk about. It's a very affordable way to get into hydrogen alpha viewing and especially if you're thinking about some of these uh, uh, eclipses coming up, uh, now is the time to get this. These, th these things are going to be very popular um, as the eclipses get closer. Uh, but it's important to uh, remember you can use this any day of the year, it's sunny. It doesn't. You don't have to wait for an eclipse. These are these are great telescopes to, you know, you hear uh, on the internet that a uh, a flare popped off on the sun. Well, you can quickly grab this, go out in the backyard with a tripod, and you're up and viewing within a few minutes. All right. Well, I think that's everything I wanted to say. The uh, Coronado PSD Personal Solar Telescope. Thank you very much. Clear skies.